my friends around the world. This is Ramon Granados broadcasting from Perth, Australia. Um, another uh, interview of Green Tiger Journals on Hemp Engineering. Today we have Mr. Peter Miles. What a great honor having you with us in our show, Mr. Peter. <laughs> Ramon, it's an absolute pleasure and clearly going to be good fun. So thanks very much for inviting me on. <laughs> Yes, I have been following your work um, in the last uh, year on regards of everything that you're doing in Africa. But before doing this, how did you end up in the hemp business? What is your background? My background? Well, that's a long story around because I'm very old, but um, I've done about, uh, about 30, 30 odd years uh, entrepreneurial ventures, so in various different sectors. Um, before which I was actually in the music business. So I was a roadie uh, with various touring acts. So I've toured the world, which was quite fun. Um, but about two and a half years ago, one of the people that I worked with back in the late 80s, 90s, was the guy from Birmingham in the UK, a guy called Andy Neal. He actually, he, he, he met the beautiful New York um, uh, princess and, and traveled to New York, got married, had kids and then TikTok, TikTok. Got, got divorced because that's what happens but he stayed there so anyway he'd stayed in in america and we'd stayed in touch over the years but about three years ago he started telling me about something that him and his team had invented which is called a smart box and they were doing trials on hemp farms in upstate new york and it was designed initially for africa where it's an off-grid uh, hemp processing system about the size of a, a shipping container that yes. you can place right next to where you're cultivating the crop. So you've got that processing facility right close to where uh, you're doing the cultivation and it turns the crop into three basic products. So I was involved with a fintech business at the time, but that fintech business was a, an early casualty of um, COVID. So in around about uh, February 2020, um, Andy decided that because I wasn't now involved in the fintech business, I could actually uh, be involved in his business, which was very kind of him. So that's where I started um, full time. And I, from there, we, we were involved in actually establishing the farm in, in uh, Southwest Zambia and moving the product project forward. Well, that's my that, second past. <laughs> but with a technology like this, you can do a great positive impact in a lot of farmers. In, in not just Africa, worldwide, because basically you are bringing everything that the farmer needs to generate the power to run the operation. This is fantastic. Yeah, no, it's, it's very good. And, it, and it's, quite, <clears throat> it's quite modular and it's quite versatile. So we've already spoken about the ability to be off-grid as a, as, a, as a standalone unit in Africa around which you can build community and other co-benefits it can actually derive from. But there is a specific in, um, I don't know about Australia, but certainly in Europe and in North America, CBD farmers um, have, an, <clears throat> have an, a, an issue, which is once they've harvested their flowers and seeds, excuse me, <clears throat> and they've got their CBD oil, they're left with the biomass, which we all know is actually probably one of the most valuable bits of the plant. Yes. There's nothing they can do with it because it's, you know, there's no way to process it into anything really. Um, so a lot of them just treat it as waste. So they'll burn it, they'll bury it, or they'll put it in a landfill. So what we can do in those circumstances, instead of having a shipping container, we can put, we can have a truck mounted smart box system. And we could drive to those, uh, onto those farms with the biomass, and we could turn that, that into viable commercial products, like yes. Yes. Um, yes. a substitute for wood chips as hemp chips, or or uh, hemp bricks for, for fuel, or yes. especially as we've discussed with another module, you can turn it into biochar. So you're now turning a waste product into a, into a, into a bio-preferred product, if you like. Of course, uh, the, the uh, way of growing the hemp varies with respect to when we grow for CBD, because when you grow for industrial hemp, it's like a bamboo, you grow three, four, five meters high. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, when you grow for CBD specifically, you grow the plant like marijuana. It's like a bush, you know? So um, uh, the content of biomass is not as, uh, as, in, as much as you can get from industrial hemp uh, cultivation. Yeah, no, 
Absolutely, absolutely right. But, but what you've got, you, and we, <clears throat> we've already done it. I can, I can share some stuff with you. Um, the team have already turned that exact biomass, so not the fantastically tall uh, industrial I, I, yes. stuff, but they've turned that biomass, which is essentially a waste product in, yes. for the hemp farmers, for the CBD farmers, uh, into, into, into bricks that have been burned and um, have been tested in independent research labs and stuff. So there's... There's, there is an opportunity there, and we think it's quite significant. A fantastic opportunity. So, the, looking forward, your projects in in, in in this country, in Africa, um, what are your plans of expansions? I guess you are planning to go to other countries and grow steady, steady, and until you... Well, <clears throat> well no, absolutely, yeah. You've got to have, you know, we, as we all know, Hemp's a fantastic product that creates fabulous products, but also you know it's a really good product for climate change. You know, because the amount of CO two that you can you can put out here. So our plan is to is to is to scale the cultivation of hemp as, as fast as possible, which is another reason for quite a lot of focus being on Africa because the amount of land that's available. But what we've done, what we're building in Zambia, is almost like a national rollout model. With, the, with our one farm with the organic stuff, regenerative stuff in the set for, you know, helping train farmers in hemp farming, all other kinds of stuff. Once we've proven that up with the government, which we're hoping to do a trial next year with the government supporting in, in 10 provinces, then we're able to actually then go to other countries, of which we're already talking to a few, like uh, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Mozambique, South Africa, et cetera, and go, well, here's a template for how this can be rolled out. So let's duplicate that in your country and let's duplicate that in the other country. And it's important to do it country by country because we need to get away from any, any impression that this is any way of kind of old colonial, you know, um, oh, Europeans oh, coming in. Yeah, exactly. So in, in Zambia, for instance, there's an operating company called um, e Zambia, what great thing. Uh, that's that's got ownership by the by the local Zambians who are running it. So the management of the workers' collective own equity in that in that business, and the whole team now. Because what Steve's done is built a team of Zambians to run it. The team is run now by Zambians, all Zambians oh, in Zambia. Good. This is good. So it's all about that, and we're not going to own any land. We don't want to go out and buy large tracts of land. Ours is about enabling local farmers, um, you know, the small, medium farmers, and the contract farmers. To actually be able to cultivate hemp profitably, which would encourage them to, uh, to develop the market themselves. Uh, as a starter, because once you learn how to do uh, the farming, uh, then basically the rest becomes of um, uh, getting the hand on technology that we can transform in products. And we can teach the Africans to do that. That is one of the the missions that I'm trying to do for South America. Oh, that's interesting because because the farm not only becomes a it becomes a center, a hub. So you you're able to have a research team in there. You can have education systems in there, so people can get can bring their own ideas. And you you've actually got this this sort of um, swapping of information. And it's important that the hemp business, the likes of you, me, Ramon, and, and a multitude of others, ensure that that communication we're getting the we're getting the best. You know the best um, practices are yeah. shared between people to really drive this forward. You mentioned that uh, it's not legalized yet in Zambia, or no, it's legalized. So what's happened is it, 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 it it's passed the parliament, it's been signed off by the president, but they but the this the actual the actual licenses. So all the all the terms of the licenses which have been agreed haven't yet been issued. So it's weeks maximum away. Oh so really? Yeah. Because they're in the rainy season at the moment anyway, so planting planting won't be till March or April, and we're we're intending to have a um, do an initial planting on the farm both outside and in the greenhouse. Well, uh, I guess you are very close to start building very soon. I congratulate yeah. you. I hope that you, you find the proper line, and if you had the opportunity to send a message to the decision makers, what would you tell them? <laughs> Which is you mean the politicians? The decision makers, not just politicians. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it would be the same as everyone would say. It's you know, 
and and, it's, and it is actually beginning, as we know, in factory bits. But they just need to really embrace industrial hemp uh, uh, for all it for all it can offer, um, both to their own economies, um, their own societies, but also to the to the global you know, panic that we've got about climate change. You know, it, it's a sustainable. Yeah. Well, the Americans have got a new term. It's called bio preferred. I don't know if you've heard of that, Ramon. Bio preferred. <laughs> yeah, bio preferred. It's um, the USDA have been talking about it for a while. But but what they what, what, I, th what I think that means, I don't know for sure. But what I think that means is, you know, they're looking for um, uh, products. They're looking for um, crops, bio crops, which can be which can be turned into a whole raft of products, as opposed to the fossil fuels. Uh, products that we currently use. So bio preferred, it's a perfect bio preferred uh, crop as we all know. So yeah, just get I on the program you. politicians, get with us, we're out there. Exactly right. And you know what, Peter, um, hemp is the actual uh, and perhaps the only instrument that third world countries can use to truly find independence. We. We can grow for biodiesel, we can grow for food, we can grow for clothing, we can grow for any needs that we can, you know, that the people need. And all countries will become profitable because at the end of the day, by opening a market in each one of the third world countries, either in South America, Southeast Asia, or Asia in general, in Africa, where the majority of those countries need all kind of help, technological help to transform hemp into something. We all have that technology, it's not difficult. It's just the decision makers just do need to embrace and that will give um, uh, empowering uh, power, I could say. <laughs> To the people. No, you're, you're right. And I, I actually think it's really exciting. I, you know, I talk, I talk, some might say endlessly, but I talk, uh, I talk about the green, industri the green industrial revolution. Yes. And we really are in the green industrial revolution. And what that actually offers, you know, South America, Africa, South Asia, or wherever, is the opportunity actually to leapfrog the, you know, the developed uh, uh, countries. Because, because that's half the reason we look to Africa because it's much easier to create a new system where yep. there isn't a massively entrenched existing system. Whereas in our, you know, in, my, in, in the in Europe and that, it's you know, there's so deeply ingrained vested interests that it's very hard. And I don't, I don't think they want to prevent the change, but they do want to slow it down to their pace. Whereas in in places like Africa, look, if we can get this moving, it can scale very quickly. And they can be an example to the rest of the world. There's no doubt. He can bring a lot of prosperity to a lot of people, either Indeed. up or down. Peter, this has been a great pleasure uh, talking to you in this uh, short interview that we will also use as promo for the African Hemp Summit. Um, it, also, it is also a great pleasure knowing that your company will join us as well. Um, yes. Brilliant. This will be. I knew uh, it'd be fun, Ramon. I knew it'd be fun. So thanks for that. All the best. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you.